everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Unicorns and Typewriters. My name is Skylar and I'm back today with another exciting booktube video. So in today's video, I want to talk about my favorite reads of 2021. So these are all of my very favorite books out of the books that I read this year. I wanted to highlight some of the ones that I thought were the best in hopefully helping you all with book recommendations if you are looking for great books to read in the upcoming year. So I hope that you all enjoy watching this video. Let's get started. So the first book that I read this year that really stood out to me was Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I loved this book. If you've been watching my channel, I think I've raved about it a couple times already, but it is about a Gumiho, which is a nine-tailed fox spirit, and it is popular folklore from Korea. And so this book does take place in Korea, in the city of Seoul, and I absolutely loved reading it. It is about a girl who is possessed by the spirit of the Gumiho. Her mother is a full Gumiho and she is half Gumiho, half human. So she ends up saving the life of a human boy, which is not what she's supposed to do. And it causes her to lose her fox speed, which is her Gumiho soul. And this puts her life at extreme danger. She actually needs to take the souls or lives of others to live. It's such a cool concept. And I love the romance that is kind of, I think, obvious from this story. You can tell she sacrifices her soul for a boy. I think we all kind of know that we're gonna get a little bit of a romance there. So what surprised me about this book that I really loved was that it also really plays into the mother-daughter dynamic between Gu Myung, who is the main character, and her mother, who has raised her to more so be a Gumiho than a human, but she, of course, is still half human and has a lot of feelings that her mother doesn't necessarily understand, or so we think as the novel goes on. There's a lot more dimension to that, which is what I found surprising and really loved. Between the romance, between the cool folklore aspect of the Gumiho, between the mother-daughter dynamic, and on top of that, it taking place in Seoul, which over the past couple years, I've gotten really into K-dramas and a lot of K-dramas take place in Seoul. So it was really cool to like recognize the city as I was reading, even though I've never been there in person, I really want to, but I've seen so many scenes in TV shows, film, that it was still really familiar. So I really, really enjoyed this. There is kind of a companion novel that goes with this. I did not get to read it this year, but I do plan on reading it in the upcoming year. So stay tuned for that. But as far as 2021 goes, this book definitely falls on my list of one of my favorite books and I do highly recommend it. Another book that really stood out to me as an amazing read in 2021 was Winterwood by She Earnshaw. I read her book, The Wicked Deep as well, and I had been meaning to read Winterwood for a really long time. I do have the Outcrate exclusive. I finally read it at the beginning of this year and I got to read it when it was snowing out, which was amazing. So it was just like the perfect setting to be reading this book because in the book they have a very significant large snowstorm. If you're looking for like a witchy dark read, 10 out of 10 recommend. She Earnshaw just has like a way with writing these dark atmospheric stories. It had a really big twist toward the end of the book. There were some things I suspected that were true that didn't really shock me, but there was still kind of a big twist at the end that I absolutely loved. I love it when a book can shock me a little bit. I strongly felt that this belonged on my list of some of my favorite books of 2021. I'm mostly just doing these in order from kind of oldest to newest as to when I read it. So I'm starting with the ones I read earlier in the year and going to the most recent that I've read. This next book I feel super strongly about. It would be one of the first ones I think of. Girl, Serpent, Thorn by Melissa Basherdoust. This book was absolutely amazing. I like fell into this one from the very beginning. It says on the front here, sometimes the princess is the monster and it does just that. It has very fairy tale vibes and it follows a princess, but she is in fact very monstrous as it may be. And I loved, loved the whole book, like from beginning to end. There was just so much to love about this book. And if you, like me, love fairy tales, dark fairy tales, 
if like the grim fairy tales interest you i would 10 out of 10 recommend checking out this book it is well worth the read and it is based on a lot of persian folklore which i think is really interesting because i've really never read any persian folklores or stories before so i just this book was so surprising and wonderful for me this year. I just picked it up because I loved the cover and kind of recognized having seen it bounce around Instagram a little bit, but didn't know much about it. And I'm so, so glad I picked this one up. It's just, it's a beautiful, like diverse read and it's just a very beautiful story. And on top of that, you get a lot of cultural diversity. I think a lot of Americans are probably like me and haven't really read Persian folklore before. Just talking about it makes me smile because I loved this book so much. So the next book on my list for all of you fellow horror YA fans is Never Contented Things by Sarah Porter. This book I loved so much. It's been a long time since I've read a book that's made me think so much and that has creeped me out so much. <laughs> I still get creeped out by this book sometimes and it's been months now since I read it. Still really want to pick up more of Sarah Porter's books because I loved this so much. She writes just in such a beautiful way but also in such a bizarre way. This is one of the most bizarre books I have ever read in my entire life but it impressed me so much. I strive to be like half as original as this author is. If I could ever be this original, that is like the dream. She really blew me away. This book is mostly about Ksenia, who is kind of the main character. Her sort of foster brother, Josh, is also a main character, as well as surprisingly later in the book, their best friend, Lexi, which I feel like at the start didn't seem like that was going to happen. Like I didn't really see there being a third main character, but there is. The perspectives change mostly between the three of them. And then also we get a little bit of perspectives from these sort of dark, very scary uh, fairy type creatures that are involved in the story. This book was just so interesting. It deals with a lot of really serious topics like the foster care system and abuse and child neglect in combination though with some of the most interesting, fantastical, creepy concepts in combination <laughs> with friendship, romance. There, there's so much going on in this book and a lot of what does happen, I would say there are some really controversial topics in this book as well. Um, but for me, I don't really mind being made to feel uncomfortable. I think that a good story is meant to make you feel something and feel something strongly. So to me, even if a book makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, it makes me think about hard topics and question things, that is a really good book. So this book to me was completely amazing. It's not for those with a weak stomach. I do highly recommend if you do like the horror genre to check this one out. It definitely goes on my list of the best books I read in 2021. The next book that definitely falls into this list as well is Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. So I absolutely love this. It is my first book that I've read by this author. I now have some of her other books because I loved it so much and heard so many rave reviews about her other work and had, quite frankly, I had picked up her other work multiple times in the past, like at bookstores, looked at it and just not quite gotten it for whatever reason. Usually finances are involved when I look at books lovingly in bookstores and don't actually buy them but I finally decided to get a couple of her books and I thought about trying to read them in order, but decided to go for this one because I do like to read some new books during the year um, instead of, you know, I try not to read only old books or only new books. I try to mix it up because there's just so many books I want to read, but this one had created a lot of buzz earlier this year on social media. So I decided to jump into it and I, absolutely loved this book. I love the cover. I just have to show this off really fast. So it's got two girls on the front and the back, which I would think represent the sisters. And on the pages, you can actually see them like holding hands, which I think is so cool. That like blew my mind. I have so many like books that have pretty edges that are like sparkly or a bright color, 
from book boxes, but the fact that this has them holding hands, I was just like, this is the coolest. This is my favorite. <laughs> anyway, enough of that because it's not really about appearances. This book was a very difficult book to read. It is a contemporary read. I would give kind of a warning ahead that it deals with a lot of mental health issues. It deals with self-harm. It deals with eating disorders, sickness and cancer and death. So obviously there's a lot of really, really dark topics. There's also beautiful topics like family and more specifically coming from a family of immigrants, which I thought was definitely a really cool topic to explore. There's also really inspiring kind of bond between two sisters and it's, it's dark and real and not always like the prettiest picture, but it is about Jane who is the younger sister and her family moved from Seoul to the States when she was quite young and she's really struggling in her life to kind of find a place. She is the one who's dealing with her mental health and an eating disorder and self-harm. And it's at times, I think a very triggering book to read if you've ever dealt with any of those issues with your own mental health, but it also is just so powerful. It's not kind of like a neatly tied up book but I think it goes into topics that are so important to talk about and it makes you think a lot. And I like that in a book personally. I just think it is really worth reading. I think the topics it deals with are things that people should be aware of and people should talk about. And I think that makes this a really, really important book. And I definitely had to put it on my list of books for 2021 that are my favorite. Another book that I have to put on my list <laughs> is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I really loved this book. I did a whole video reviewing it. Maybe I'll link that down below. And I also kind of did a whole rant about diversity and representation in YA, which is something that's really, really important to me. And I got a little riled up about some of the conversations about this book for specific reasons. And if you want to know about those, then definitely look below and I'll link that video down in my description. But I highly recommend this one. I don't think there's a lot of people out there that don't know this book at this point because it was so, so popular and I am late to the game in reading it. So there is that. <laughs> like I said, most people probably know about this, but it is about a woman of French descent who makes a deal with the darkness, which is essentially like an evil god. She ends up wishing to live forever to kind of escape her life as it is in a very small French village in the 1700s, I believe. And she is granted her wish to live forever. However, this dark god also kind of, you know, plays his little dark game. It's so interesting. I think this book is a love story, but it's also kind of not. It's kind of just about this one woman and her will to survive. And I think it's a really beautiful story. And I highly recommend, I do think it has some really good representation in it of France, which I don't see represented a ton, France and French history and French characters. And also one of the other main characters is Jewish. So I think there is some cool representation in this book of some different cultures that we don't always get in YA. So I do think that it is worth a read and I do highly recommend. And if you wanna hear more about my opinion on it, check out that link down below. But yeah, it definitely had to go on the list. So the next book on my list is The Hearts We Sold by Emily Lloyd Jones. So this book I absolutely loved. It is about a girl named Dee who is living in a modern world, a contemporary world, much like our own, where there are demons. So this is interesting. They call them demons, but there's also some kind of insinuation that they're sort of more like aliens. They are creatures from another world that have sort of begun to show themselves to people and admit that they exist, even though um, it kind of implies that they've been around for much, much longer than the human race has knowledge of. They have kind of come out to the human population. However, most 
most people can't really recognize them or see them because you can't really see them until you want to make a deal with them. And D is pretty desperate to make a deal, so she is able to recognize a demon. And these demons deal in something very interesting, which is human limbs. And in this case, the demon that D meets up with deals in human hearts. So in order to have their wish fulfilled, they have to give up a limb, or in Dee's case, which this is the first demon she's heard of that does this specific thing with hearts, is basically just lend out her heart. So the demon has her heart for a certain amount of time while she is also working for the demon and doing these tasks for the demon. It's hard to go too far into it without giving too much away, but that is the basic premise without giving any spoilers. And I highly recommend checking it out. This book really surprised me in a lot of ways. The concepts that it goes into, the idea of these demons, aliens, whatever you might want to call them, is so fascinating. I thought it was really original and very unique. It definitely has a little bit of a horror element to it, but mostly it's very funny. It's very humorous. The only thing I didn't like about this book was it's one of those books that doesn't have a lot of introspection and that doesn't make it bad. Often I find those types of books to be quicker reads and it definitely was a pretty quick read, but Overall, the depth of the story and the creativeness of the world and the ideas, the concept just still grabbed me enough that although I prefer introspection, I absolutely loved this story. It also contains just like a breathtaking and heartbreaking love story and who doesn't want that? I think I joked around on my social media that this book completely ripped my heart out and stomped on it and I love that about it. <laughs> like I said, any strong felt emotion to me is like a successful book. So this one made me feel so much. And it also has some good diversity and representation as well in it. So just throwing that in there. So last but not least of my favorite reads of 2021 is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. So it is about a girl named Elizabeth who has grown up in a library in a world where there is magic, there are sorcerers, and books are essentially living things. They all have souls, as she sort of describes it, and some of them are extremely dangerous. And when these books become damaged, if they ever become damaged, especially the sort of level five ones, which are the most dangerous, they basically turn into monsters. As she was raised living in a library, which is kind of unusual, she knows the books in the library better than anyone else. And she has been raised with this idea that sorcerers are evil and that she has to protect books from them essentially and protect the libraries from them. However, she ends up having a run-in with a very handsome young sorcerer and things kind of take off from there. She is framed for a horrible crime that she did not commit after saving her entire town from one of these books that has transformed into a monster and her whole world kind of spirals out of control. She ends up getting taken away to be interviewed. She learns a lot more about the world, about magic, and starts to question what is actually right and wrong and whether she was taught the right thing growing up. And it's just so fascinating. It was such a cool adventure story. And funny enough, after reading The Hearts We Sold, this one also has concepts of demons in it. And Demons are very closely tied with sorcerers and their ability to do magic. And I just loved the whole concept. Everything about this book was so wonderful. 10 out of 10 recommend. I think it's an excellent standalone. It makes me sad standalones a little bit because I want to know more. But at the same time, this book ended in the most perfect way. It left it just open ended enough. I loved this so much and it definitely had to go on my list. So those are my favorite books of 2021. Overall, um, I think this is kind of how it's going to stay at this point. Seems as I only have a couple more days left of the year and I might start some other things, but I don't know that I'll finish them, especially novels. I would like to, in the upcoming year, do an updated video on like manga and graphic novel um, recommendations. So I hope you will all 
look forward to that. I also might try to do an updated poetry recommendation video as well because I have done that in the past, but that was probably like two years ago, which I think was around the same time I did a manga video too. So I might try to do an update to give you guys some good recommendations for those other genres. But for this, I did mostly stick to YA novels. So I do hope that you enjoyed watching. Let me know down below in the comments if you read any of these books this year or ever read them if you enjoyed them if you want to read some of these i'd love to hear that i inspired some people to pick them up like this video if you enjoyed watching definitely talk to me down below about what you think and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this this will probably be my last video of 2021 so i wish you all a very happy holiday season of what remains and also a very happy new year. I will be back soon with another booktube video. Have a good rest of your year, everyone. <laughs> See you next year. <laughs> Bye.